Um, and I'm not, I'm not very good at speeches, so I'm just kind of better at telling stories. So we're gonna try to do that. Um, but I am the re except, I won the recipients of uh, Jeffrey Holbrook Memorial Scholarships. Um, I've also gotten the Bengal Area Breakfast Rotary Club Scholarship in the past and the Automotive Scholarship. Um, last year, I was able to buy my tools and pay for gas and a little bit of my rent and my bills. Um, this year was a little bit of a different situation. I'm enrolled in the automotive program here at EMCC and I'm finishing up my first year. I am a single mother of three kids, um, very little, and um, I'm a work study student here. And I'm also doing an internship over in Augusta, so half the time I'm up here and half the time I'm down in Augusta. Um, today it's both. <laughs> um, I'm up as early as 4.30 in the morning and I drop the kids off to school and then travel an hour to come here. I'm mean, usually return home around 6.30 on a normal day about 6 30 or so um to be honest there are days that it's just plain outright overwhelming and i tend to hold my emotions in because i don't want to feel like a burden sometimes it works once in a while the ugliness comes out yeah. if you don't see that don't worry <laughs> uh, ever since i started attending emcc in 2018 it has enhanced my daily life in several ways the most important change is my personal satisfaction knowing i am fulfilling my passion in mechanics field I've always had a knack for fixing things and figuring out how they work and working my hands and puzzles stimulates my anxiety. Another change is the environment. The staff here is incredible, focusing on not just aiding me in my studies, but helping me in personal, personal issues as well. The environment is positive and I thoroughly enjoy the program and working for the envelope department. I honestly couldn't ask for better bosses. I have trust issues due to my past experiences, and I feel like I can trust the staff here, which is huge for me, it's like humongous. I feel like I have a chance to not only succeed, but to excel in my skills, and I hope someday to forward my skills and knowledge by possibly teaching a trade. We'll see. <laughs> On March 21st, my car was rear-ended here out on Hogan Road, that way, um, causing $1,200 in damages. No one was hurt, and it was no big deal. Could have fixed it, no big deal. My instructors actually took the time to look over the vehicle the day it happened to make sure it was safe to drive home. They didn't have to do it, but they wanted to make sure I was safe. Five days later on my way home, I was rear-ended again in the same exact spot on my car. The same exact spot on my car. <laughs> and uh, this time it was uh, at 70 miles per hour on the interstate while it was like a quick stop. <laughs> when I heard the popping and the crunching sound along with the feeling of the brutal force and from the other vehicle, I knew instantly without physically seeing the damage that my car was totaled. I had suffered a severe whiplash, concussion, strained muscles in my neck, back, shoulders, and my leg was on a break when I hit, so all the muscles and tendons just jumped together, and uh, it turned my leg into this big giant gray bruise, which my daughter called a zombie leg. <laughs> <laughs> it took six days to assess the car, though, deemed uh, totaled by the body shop automatically. This crushed me because all the time money I had personally put into the car that was now gone. I had um, put a lot of the parts in myself down to the shop. Okay, I forgot where we are. And um, and then, you know, it was it was a great feeling to actually put my time, my own time and effort and knowing how to do these these skills and um, it was it was satisfaction for me. Um, I was proud of it, and the insurance company thought it was junk. <laughs> Literally five minutes after hearing about the loss of the car, I received a phone call that my daughter had a serious accident in which she had put a nine inch by one inch gash into her back, requiring an ambulance ride, sedation, six hours in a hospital, and 27 stitches. Yeah. <laughs> I was devastated and my mind was just numb, and I, but I pushed forward. These events jump started the week of school vacation. Um, so April vacation, this happened like the first couple of days before it kicked off. And um, I was working a six day stretch at the dealership in Augusta for my internship. I had to make phone calls, search online for cars for sale and travel on my lunch break and immediately after work. My instructor, Mr. Thomas, had to put up with the calls and emails frequently about my situation, but instead of ignoring me and brushing me off and leaving me deal with it alone, he took time out of his vacation to talk me through it. He helped me with insurance, he helped me with finding a car and I sent him back and back and forth with pictures, and he said, oh yeah, it looks like a good car, it's not a good car, don't stay away from those. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, I took about four or five of his days to do that, so. <laughs> um, and after that, I'm grateful because he didn't have to do that. A lot of instructors don't do that, they just do their job and they go home. 
I ended up finding a almost identical car for a wholesale, wholesale price in Bath, and because of my schooling in the automotive program, I was able to do a thorough inspection of the car to see what it needed. All I had to do was pull my money and see how much I had to play with. The car was $3,000 as is, and I had a, a settlement from the first accident, and with my paycheck saved from my internship, I had about $2,000. I was short on money, the insurance didn't pay anything, the gap insurance didn't pay anything, so I was just like, there's a car, I can't get it. <laughs> uh, I lost my calm and did what most people do, and, regret, and they soon regret, and I vented on Facebook. I asked why these things kept happening. What I had done that was so wrong, I stated that I had been broken. I was just gone. <laughs> this wasn't one, two, or three things. It was two straight weeks, nonstop of bad luck, and I felt empty, kind of like a void. I didn't know what to do. When I uh, posted my rant on Facebook, Jenka Harvey got a hold of me after she saw my post and texted me the next day saying, hey, I found you a scholarship. Like, <laughs> 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 I was beyond thrilled and I literally broke down crying. Jen's a, an incredible person, and she's one of those people who is naturally positive and makes me want to be a better person. And uh, when she needs a favor, I don't hesitate to say, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> I was able to use the award letter as collateral, getting a loan from a family member in exchange for the scholarship money. Um, and when I get the money, I'll just turn it around and I'll still have my car. Because of this, I was able to purchase a car for $3,000.66, tow it up, <laughs> tow it up from Bath to Augusta where I work and spent two long days just ordering parts and piecing together piece by piece with my own hands. So the guys are uh, the cheap dealership, so the uh, ordering Mazda parts wasn't exactly in their favor. <laughs> uh, I'm. Yeah, I did that on the two days before school, and on Monday, I'm, I was able to drive my own car with an inspection sticker to school. It still needs small things here and there, but it's safe, and it's good to go right now. This outcome would never have happened if I was not a current student in the automotive program here at the UMCC. I was able to pinpoint a decent car, do a state inspection based on my experience to see what the vehicle needed, and then perform the work on my own car, with the exception of the welding. Oh, trust me, we're welding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of going for welding classes at some point to fine tune these skills eventually. <laughs> Fires are bad. If I had stayed in my old path, never attending the program, I would have listened to others tell me how I was supposed to act, being visible by holding back on my true personality, and never had the chance to follow my passion. The scholarship helped me buy a decent car, and I probably would have just ended up buying a beater car off of Craigslist and having to pay others to fix my car when it broke down. <laughs> And if it wasn't for the scholarship, I would never have been able to afford this car to begin with. I had uh, about a week to buy a car and it was very, very crunched on. <laughs> I have no shame in my work code of choice and I know it has a bright future. I was recently asked during an interview for, um, for work for me, what would I say to my younger self to give him the chance? Because of my experience here at EMCC, the answer is clear to me. Don't try to fit in when you're born to stand out. Don't listen to others talk down to you and tell you you don't need to change to strive in life. Because you don't. Know you're worthy, strong, and smart enough to, to know what you want, and then be brave enough to go for it. Don't change your personality to please others, but excel whatever you do so that others will want to be like you, just as you are. Follow your passion, and sometimes it's okay to leave with your heart and give the brain a break. Take the bad days with a heavy heart and know it's okay to have a good cry when everything becomes too much. You're strong, but not invincible. Then get up and remember that the bad days are there for contrast so you can enjoy the, even the tiniest things on the good days. Remember those who stood by you, encouraged you, praised you, and helped you during your dark times, and do your best to pay it for it. And most of all, know you will not fail, for the only way you fail is if you give up, and that's never going to happen. Thank you.